Now, first thing, let's have a go. You can see <laughs> they begin right away by saying, show that B, that expression, for how many bacteria there are at a certain number of T hours. Show that it satisfies the differential equation, dp and d, blah, 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 blah. So again, just like I did here, the best way is just take this thing and differentiate and show it satisfies, right? So let's just go ahead and do that. If this is what I think B is, what's dp or dt? Again, write that constant coefficient out the front because it doesn't affect my differentiation. Then go ahead and differentiate this guy. Done, okay? And you can see here, all I need to do is make the B part of the expression more obvious, just sort of highlight it there. And you're like, look, that's 0 0.1. Well, I think they have it in the form. They've got a fraction, I think. So I'll just rewrite it in that form. B. Okay. So there's the differential equation. Now, just let me point out, like I mentioned before, this K number, right? This guy up here. Sorry, start again. This guy tells you where you begin, your first value. And this guy tells you how quickly you grow or how quickly you decay, okay? For that reason, now just mark this pens out of your hands for a second because this is confusing. Because this is about where you start, initial condition, and how fast, like this defines the speed of everything, this number k is often called the growth rate. Now, that is intensely confusing because even though it's true, it defines how quickly everything happens. In our language of rates of change, we would actually not call k the growth rate, usually. What would we call the growth rate in this situation? db on dt. It's how the bacteria population is changing over time. Okay. Now read carefully when you're looking through a question. They will make clear which one is which. But you just need to know that both of these are often called, uh, are sort of connected to this idea of the rate. Okay. The k number, it does change, whether this happens fast or whether it happens slow. Okay. Generally, the, the way that if they want you to work out this one rather than that one, they might often say instantaneous growth rate because at a particular instant in time, dp on dt is whatever. That's, that's what um, calculus is for. Whether, whereas this number, this is constant. This is always the same for, for a whole model, for a whole population. Okay? Wait, can you tell if they give like, if it says like find the growth rate and it's like one mark when you know it's just the generally speaking also have a look at the question and if there are multiple parts and if one asks for the growth rate and then another asks for at a particular at the time when t equals da da da, da what is the growth rate then clearly they don't mean this one because this is who cares what time it is for that it's always the same number um, so look carefully at the word in the question and it will give you clues okay all right part b it says initially the number of bacteria is estimated to be a thousand Find how many bacteria there are after three hours. Answer to the nearest whole number. Okay. So all we need to do at this point is to say, well, B naught is the initial condition, right? So I'm going to say B equals a thousand times this. Okay. And do we know T? I also know T. So I'm, I'm just going to lay that there first though, because I'm going to use this equation later on. Um, now that I've got the, the equation for B. Uh, and now I can say, when t equals, uh, it's 3 hours, right? 3 hours? Okay. When t equals 3, b is equal to 1,000 e to the, and I like to do my straight substitution before I actually plug into my calculator, 1,000 e to the 0 0.3. Has someone got a number? 1349. Okay, cool. So I'm going to write my, as usual, I'm going to write my calculator readout and then I'm going to make my approximation. Okay, so we raise this question of, um, like, if we think about this, this growth rate, right? Uh, and we think, oh, at such a time, like, I don't know, <laughs> someone help, out, help me out with biology. There's some bacteria and it's currently in the process of um, splitting. What's that called? Mitosis? Meiosis. What's it called? Mitosis. Mitosis. Okay, so it's in, the, it's in the process. I'm almost there, but clearly I have not actually split just yet. So there is an argument when it has to do with populations. That you could say, well, I'm not at the 1,350th yet. So therefore, I really ought to always round down. And this is a similar kind of argument to when we were looking at series of sequences, you had to pay something off. And we said, if this is how many dollars you're going to pay off every month, well, you can't round that down. Because then, when you get to the end, you'll still have some amount 
owing, right? So you have to always round that up. Now, here's what I've got to say. There's something in the question that tells you, even though that's a, a valid line of argument, there's not really much point going to that level of detail, and you should just round to the nearest number. Have a look again at the question. It says initially, the number of bacteria is what? Estimated. It's estimated, right? So that thing already has some kind of rounding built into it, right? So it's not like I am watching and I'm like, yeah, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, right? We don't have that level of detail. So we're not like, oh, look, I'm 85% I'm to that next bacteria. No, 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 no. Just go to the nearest one. And that's why they helpfully say, just answer correct to the nearest. That's the other clue. They're just asking for you to round. Okay, so don't worry too much about making a detailed argument there. Do you do that for all of these? Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay, because again, remember I said, um, and this is, <laughs> it is a, there's a joke um, uh, about physicists, which is that, you know, you're thinking about something and it's like, assume, assume that this situation is like a perfectly spherical object with no friction and blah, 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 blah. And that's the only way you can use an idealized situation like this. Because we know in reality, there are far more variables involved than just time. So this is just a model. It's just an approximate model. And so that's why you can always pretty much do something like this. Because there are really other factors that complicate it. Okay. Right, let's have a look. Part C. Use parts A and B to find out, okay, you see how there's a clue in here, right? Find how fast the number of bacteria is growing after three hours. So you see how they specify a time? That's what tells you, hey, I want DP on DB on DT, right? That's the thing I'm after. Because if you want it at a particular time, then it doesn't matter where, when you are if you're after this. It only matters when you are if you're after this, okay? So... Let's have a look at this. I already have, uh, right from the um, first line, I've already got my expression for dp and dt, right? So when, sorry, this is part c, when t equals 3, right, I already established that db on dt is just simply this, right? db on dt equals one tenth of whatever the population is right now, this second which I just worked out was 1,350. No more calculus required, no more substitution back into this differential equation. I, that's the whole point of um, exponential growth and decay, to say if you know how big the population is, then you should be able to know what growth rate you've got, roughly. So that's, um, um, I should say approximately. That's approximately 135, 135 bacteria, what? Bacteria per hour. Bacteria per hour, right? Because the units bacteria and the time is it's per hour, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, for all. <laughs> I'm not used to measuring things in bacteria per hour. Yeah. How fast did you go? Oh, about 135 bacteria per hour. Okay. Uh, last one. By solving, and then they give you this equation. Now, just look at the equation for a second. What does this equation represent? B. Yeah, they've substituted B, uh, 10,000 for B, right? So that's why you can use that equation to find correct to the nearest hour when B, when the population will be, 10,000 bacteria. Okay, so I have just enough space over here. Let's go quickly this one. So you can imagine, by the way, this is the first question. So often we will not get handed this. You'll just have to generate this equation and substitute in B equals 10,000 or B equals whatever. So let's write this down. 10,000 equals, uh, what is it? E to the, no, 1,000. E to the 0 0.1. So do you even have to solve it? Because isn't it self-explanatory? Uh, well, I'm after a value for t, well, so I'm going to have to evaluate if, this, right? If the original time, if the original amount at the start is 1,000, yep. 10,000, sorry. Yep. It no, it starts, starts at 1,000. Oh, sorry. I, I want to get to 10,000. I'm sorry. I thought it said 1,000, but like, of course it's Time zero. zero. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no, I, I'm looking to, when is my population going to... Uh, decouple, okay, and get to 10 times bigger. So you can see, by the way, that's important because when you cancel here, you just end up with 10, right? So your initial population, uh, if you wanted to grow to, say, double, right? And even if you didn't know what your initial population was, you could still work that out, right? Because you'd have P0 here, and then you'd have two times P0. You don't even know what to need, uh, work out what the initial population is. So here I've got e to the 0 per 1t equals 10. So now what do I write? Log. I will take logs of both sides, or I'll just rewrite this as a, uh, as a log equation. So I've got 0 per 1t equals log, log 10. 
Yep. So t equals, I'm going to multiply both sides by 10, I guess. 10 log. 10. Someone got it? Uh, 0 0.02. Dot, 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 dot. <coughs> they went to the nearest hour, again, because this whole model is approximated. So therefore, I'm just going to say 23 after 23 hours. Okay. Now, just before we leave off this question, <clears throat> that first line of, oh, tell me when we're going to get to 10,000 bacteria, right? If I wanted to know, like suppose I now started with 10,000 bacteria, like this is my new start point, how long will it take me to get to 100,000 bacteria to again be 10 times as much? And the answer is because if I just change those two numbers up the top to be initially 10,000, and eventually 100,000, what will be different about the subsequent working? Answer, nothing will be different in my subsequent working, right? Because I'm still going to cancel out uh, zeros, I'm just gonna cancel out more of them, and I still end up with 10 on the right-hand side, right? That's the, how much bigger the, the population is. So in other words, it took me 23 hours, it took me a day to get from 1,000 to 100,000. But it only, sorry, 1,000 to 10,000. But it only takes me another day to get from 10,000 to 100,000. And another day to get from 100,000 to a million, right? And that's the whole idea of exponential growth. The bigger you are, the faster you can grow.